Sometimes you read a book that you just can't put down. How do you like it? <laughs> and other times you find an author whose books you can't stop reading. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 most popular fiction authors. For this list, we've looked at a combination of market performance and artistic merit in order to determine the best popular fiction authors. Hello, Amy. Thank you for the flowers. Peter. Hello. For lists looking more specifically at classic English or international writers, be sure to check out our videos on those topics. I now wanted to try my hand at writing a really stupendously long narrative. Number 10, George R. R. Martin. Winter is coming. Winter is coming. In the modern world, there seems to exist two groups of people. Those who read Game of Thrones before watching the TV series, and those who tuned into the show before getting their hands on the original inspiration. I am the sword in the darkness. I am the watcher on the walls. I am the shield that guards from the realm of men. Either way, a lot of us have read George R. R. Martin. My opinion has always been that the battle between good and evil was fought within the individual human heart. All of us have the capacity for good. All of us have the capacity for evil. Writer of A Song of Ice and Fire, the fantasy novel series that inspired the show, Martin seen his fictional imaginings translated to the screen quite successfully. When you play the Game of Thrones, you win or you die. So successfully, in fact, he's been labeled the American Tolkien. It's sex, it's violence, it's a very good read. Any man dies with a clean sword, I'll rape his f***ing corpse! Number 9. Philip Pullman The behavior of these particles is quite unmistakable. Dust is flowing into this man through his demon, from a city in another world. A world much like ours in a parallel universe, coexisting with our own. To be a popular writer, you naturally have to please a lot of people. And there are few with a demographic as wide-reaching as Philip Pullman's. There are all sorts of reasons why fairy tales are important and interesting and valuable to us. Uh, one is that they engage with really deep human themes. The British wordsmith employs his own self-explained brand of stark realism, most famously in the His Dark Materials trilogy. <laughs> This trio of titles is aimed predominantly at the young adult market, but it's invariably picked up by kids and grown-ups as well. His reimagining of reality with generous helpings of unreality has many hooked. And hankering for a demon of their very own. Just let them try to stop us. Number 8. Tom Clancy Sir, this bomb was not Nemeroff. I know this guy. That's what you said after Grosny, Mr. Ryan. Put it in your report. The plutonium came An author first and a political critic second, Tom Clancy saw his public profile rise in parallel to the popularity of his books. I tell people the most important talent in writing is persistence. That's probably the most important talent in anything, is persistence, sticking with it, seeing it through, not giving up. His more than 100 million books sold attest to how strong that popularity is. The Russians will stop at nothing to prevent Ramius from defecting. They are desperate. They've invented this story that he's crazy because they need our help to sink him before he can safely contact us. Closely associated with novels and stories tackling military life, the Cold War, the post-Cold War era, and espionage, Clancy appeals strongly to a male audience. The author passed away in 2013, but his books remain strong sellers, as do his video games. That, in addition to the film versions featuring his Jack Ryan character, promise to keep that popularity alive for years to come. Any way you can get that Boy Scout on a field trip look off your face? Not a chance. 
That's what I like about you. Number seven, Dan Brown. One of the 21st century's greatest literary success stories, Dan Brown has had readers waiting on his every word ever since Digital Fortress was published in 1998. I wasn't under the impression that episode had endeared me to the Vatican. Oh, it didn't. But it did make you... It was forma formidable. Uh, formidable. Brown's books about Harvard professor of religious iconology and symbology Robert Langdon, including 2000's Angels and Demons and 2003's The Da Vinci Code, have propelled him to massive success. Thank you. Readers have been second and third guessing the author and his creation as they've followed the intricate clues that form the treasure hunts in these novels. Five dials, each with 26 letters. That's 12 million possibilities. I've never met a girl who knew that much about a crypt death. Brown has brought highbrow topics to the masses with healthy doses of conspiracy theories and thrills. And he's built an impressive and loyal fan base as a result. When you're a creative person, whether you're a writer, an artist, a musician, all you have is your own taste. And you write to that taste, and then you just hope people share your taste. Number six, Robert Ludlum. What's your name? What's your name? I don't know. Oh, God. All four of our writers leading up to this point have seen their works adapted for film and TV, but few books have been brought to the screen as successfully as those of Robert Ludlum. The Bourne Identity, The Bourne Supremacy, and The Bourne Ultimatum have all been brought to life with Matt Damon as the main man. Jason Bourne is dead. You hear me? He drowned two weeks ago. The films did awesomely well, but there's no smoke without fire. Ludlum unfortunately passed away before the first film was made, but his legacy lives on. Look at us. Look at what they make you give. With an estimated 290 to 500 million books in print, that's quite a legacy. <laughs> Number 5. Michael Crichton Another author who's sadly no longer with us, Michael Crichton's crowning glory in terms of his career as a writer was surely Jurassic Park. Can it happen? Because I know you've done a lot of research on this. I, I wouldn't worry about it. I, <laughs> I think dinosaurs have been dead for a long time and, they're, and they'll stay that way for quite a while. The 1990 novel became a 93 Steven Spielberg superfilm, and Crichton's 95 follow-up heaped more Hollywood royalties at the author's door. With an impressive educational background in medicine, which allowed him to create the massively popular TV hospital drama ER, Crichton's works would often carry a scientific and technological theme running alongside mankind's struggle to advance further. Amy. Pretty. Yes, you are. This is a talking gorilla, Moira. He was brilliant at outside-of-the-box thinking. We leave him alone, he leaves us alone. Maybe he doesn't want to be left alone. He's been down here in isolation for 300 years. Maybe Jerry's lonely. Number four, John Grisham. <laughs> An old adage says that you should write about what you know. And John Grisham knows a lot about law. Sam did not plant that bomb. He did not kill those kids. For 10 years before becoming an author, he worked within the courtroom. When I wrote A Time to Kill 30 years ago, um, it was very autobiographical. I was that small town lawyer trying to you know, survive and um, try, dreaming of the big trial. Ever since his authorial debut in 1989 with A Time to Kill, he has been relaying his experiences back to us in books like The Firm, The Pelican Brief, The Client, and The Rainmaker. We've responded by buying 275 million copies of his books. This is Jackie Lemanchik's actual senior claims manual, and within it there is an executive memorandum entitled Section U. Grisham is one of only three authors to sell two million copies on a first printing. The other two? 
Tom Clancy, and our next lady of modern literature. You take my breath away. Number three, J.K. Rowling. If you've never heard of Harry Potter, then you've had your head in some seriously dense sand. It was an awful thing to say. <gasps> Dobby! Stop! Dobby! 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 Please stop! The boy wizard is world famous, and his creator is heralded by many as one of the great authors of the 21st century. I don't think I had ever felt so excited. I thought I'd love to write that. I'd never thought about writing for children. I'd never thought about aiming anything at that age group. And yet it was the thing that I was meant to write. J.K. Rowling has seen her seven strong book series translate into eight box office smashing blockbuster movies, wielding its magic all over the globe. From Transfiguration Class to Professor Trelawney, from Bertie Bott to Batilda Bagshot, Rowling's magical world has become as familiar as our own. Better be Gryffindor! As a result, she's had muggles of all ages transfixed for years. You're a wizard, Harry. I'm a what? A wizard and a thumping good one, I'd wager, once you trade up a little. Number two, J.R.R. Tolkien. There's one page on this particular paper was left blank. Glorious. Nothing to read, so I scribbled on it. I can't think why. In a hole in the ground there lived a hobbit. While Harry Potter is an undoubted hero within the fantasy genre, his story is but one in a long list of fantastical epics, a list topped and trailblazed by Tolkien. One ring to rule them all. The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit, the two most well-known adventures set within the English writer's magical realm of Middle-earth, set the standard for all fantasy-based novels which have followed. What has most captured the imagination for generations is the phenomenal attention to detail. Tolkien leaves no stone unturned, no hobbit hole unexplored, and no reader unimpressed. You shall not pass! The immensely popular film series based on his work have only added to Tolkien's popularity in recent years. Mustn't ask us not as business. No, call it, call it. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Would you kill another partner? You're not my partner. Now here's what I'll offer you. I will design Cortland. You'll put your name on it. You'll keep all the fees. But you will guarantee that it will be built exactly as I designed it. It was actually worn by Queen Victoria when she was a little girl. You should have one of those. I'm flesh and blood, but not human. I haven't been human for 200 years. Number one, Stephen King. Here's Johnny! <laughs> Thrilling his way into first place, Stephen King is about as prolific a writer as the world has ever seen, and he's maintained his popularity throughout his lengthy publishing career. Come and play with us, Daddy. Forever. And ever. And ever. Opening his authorial account with Carrie in 1974, before following up with Salem's Lot and The Shining, King very much started as he meant to go on. And when you're down here with me, you float so! Continually reinventing the contemporary horror genre, his books have often been made into movies, helping to keep his name constantly before the public. Please, both. Please, don't put me in the dark. I was afraid of the dark. The result? 
an estimated 300 to 350 million books sold in a variety of genres. King is king today. I've written some pretty awful things in my time. <laughs> if they can't differentiate, I mean, hey, guys, I'm all right, you know. I'm, but of course, I'd say that, wouldn't I? Do you agree with our list? <laughs> Which author do you like to read? For more fashionably fictional top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Remember your tradecraft and you'll be fine.